that as Greg said, my name is Eric Jensen. I'm the general manager of exploration for EMX Royalty Corporation. And six months ago, I stood at this podium and I said that it was a great time to be an EMX shareholder. I was right. <laughs> it was a great time and it still is a great time and I'll explain why as we go forward. Oops. Ah. Uh, this is some um, legal language regarding forward-looking statements. This is available in the conference circulation materials. Well, uh, Greg hit on some of these points, so I'm just going to move quickly to, through this. Right now, the world is using more natural resources than ever. That doesn't change. It hasn't changed. Uh, we're on a consumption growth curve. We haven't debated or, or deviated from that in some time. Unfortunately, however, uh, the investment markets chose not to support exploration very much over the past five to six years. Our industry has been in a remarkable downturn, as many of you are well aware. And uh, yeah, the rate of new discoveries has dropped off precipitously. And uh, the exploration pipeline is running dry, and that's very clear. There are some exceptions to it out in this hallway, but for the most part in the exploration and mining sector, it's been a bleak five years in terms of discovery rates, et cetera. Uh, that creates quite an opportunity, however. Companies like ourselves, EMX, have not stopped exploring during this downturn. And over the past six to eight months, we have seen a considerable uptick in the interest of a variety of companies, ranging from smaller companies to mid-tiers to majors in exploration projects. Suddenly, our, our doorbell is ringing quite a bit with com companies that are looking for new projects, which puts us and companies like us in an excellent position. And uh, at the same time, over that same time period, if you look at the performance in the mining business and the, uh, the mineral sector, the royalty and streaming companies have done extremely well. So my question to you is this, how do you capture and combine that upside that clearly exists in the exploration side of the market right now with the long-term performance and value delivery of a royalty company? Well, that's what, that's what EMX does. That's what our company is. This is a schematic illustration of our business model. And I'm going to focus up here on the upper left-hand corner, a process that we call royalty generation. I'm the exploration manager for the company, and I have teams of very talented but entrepreneurial, and that's important, entrepreneurial exploration geologists who comb the world looking for new exploration uh, opportunities. When we see those, we acquire those opportunities, we advance them, and then we sell them to other companies, typically mining companies or other exploration companies. And in doing so, we receive cash. Oftentimes, we receive equity or shares in the partner company. But most importantly, we receive a royalty interest. And so we use that cash that we receive from the sales of these assets. That goes back to the front end of the process. I use that for more exploration, more acquisition, and the growth of more royalties. And through time, this becomes a self-sustaining, self-supporting flywheel of royalty generation. And I'll show you the portfolio here in a minute. Uh, along the way, these talented exploration geologists that we have are also told to keep your eye out for royalty acquisition uh, opportunities. Now, as you probably know, the ro buying royalties in the market is a very competitive uh, endeavor. Uh, companies typically pay premiums for cash flowing royalties, but our strength in our company is the technical team. We've got great technical prowess, and the way that we use that to our advantage in the royalty acquisition space is we look for royalties that have technical or exploration upsides that are not recognized or appreciated by the broader market. And so we're very selective in what we purchase and what we choose to bid on. And we use our technical strengths to sleuth those opportunities. I'll show you a few examples. Also along the way, uh, we also keep an eye out for exploration companies that have great assets, great management, but are critically undervalued in, in, the, in the market. And this current market condition, what Greg was talking about, we see a lot of opportunities right now. And so our company's had a great track record over its 15-year history of doing very well with our strategic investments, and that contributes quite a bit to our has contributed quite a bit to our bottom line. These three business approaches, the, uh, whoops, the, uh, the sale of uh, projects to generate royalties, the acquisition of royalties, and the strategic investments we make share a commonality. When we sell a project and keep a royalty, when we buy a royalty, we make a strategic investment, the partner company then advances that project to the benefit of our shareholders and our company with no further cost to EMX. It's a great business model that is highly leveraged and generates a lot of value through time to our shareholders. Uh, this is a look at our current global portfolio. So we've got a portfolio that now consists of over 100 
mineral and royalty assets around the world. And this is growing quite rapidly. When I joined the company back in 2010, we had roughly about 30 uh, pro project interests around the world. That's now tripled, and it's effectively about doubled since 2015, 2016. We're in a growth phase. The model's accelerating. We're growing quickly, adding a lot of assets and agreements to our portfolio. And we've done this in an incredible bear market. So when this business model hits the bull market again, which we believe we're seeing signs of right now, this thing is really set to take off. But we're doing well in a bad market. We're built to sustain growth in both. That's the tenant of our business model. Our industry partners include some of the world's biggest mining companies, the Rio Tintos, Anglo-Americans. We're doing business with Salt 32 now as well. But also, you'll see a bunch of uh, other companies, some smaller companies. These, are not these may not be household names right now, but what I like about doing business with smaller companies is that they're inclined to give a share capital as part of our agreement structures. And as you're aware, and we see some examples of this out on the floor, when companies, smaller companies have expiration successes, it can be a single drill hole, you can see tremendous appreciation in their share price. And so in our equity portfolio, we can see substantial exposure to near-term expiration success, plus we have the royalties for the long-term benefit to our shareholders as well. So we capture value in all sides of the equation in that sense. Um, I'll probably just summarize by going through some of the, um, uh, the key developments we have in our, in our company this year. Uh, one of the big things that's happened is we monetized an asset in Russia. Uh, this was the sale of our, our Malmish asset, which put a substantial amount of cash in the portfolio. So right now, your, uh, EMX's market cap consists two-thirds of our value is in cash we have in our treasury. Uh, the company has also seen a great year in terms of cash flow. Uh, we've been very commercially active. Uh, we're going to set an internal record in terms of commercial activity this year. So we're seeing enhancement of our cash flow. This comes from both royalties. Uh, it also comes from a variety of, of pre-production payments and advanced royalties that we, uh, we receive. One thing that people may not appreciate about our, our company, with a portfolio this size and growing, uh, one of the things that we see is that we, have a, we always put um, advanced royalties and pre-production payments into our agreement structures. And so our company receives royalty revenue even before production. We have a substantial amount of cash flow that comes from our agreement structures via advanced royalty payments and via structured option payments and other types of uh, pre-production payments to our benefit. Uh, this year, we've also seen a significant uptick, as I was describing before, in commercial activity. Uh, we've been doing deals with companies like Rio Tinto. We've done six deals with them over the past three years. Uh, South 32 is a company that we're now doing repeat business with, and we look forward to building a, uh, an ongoing relationship with them. But also the smaller companies. And so when we do these deals with smaller companies and we receive share equity, we see a, a, a significant growth in our equity positions in a variety of companies across the resource space. All of these things, the cash flow from the royalties, the pre-production, advanced royalty payments, our basic agreement terms and these equity positions, and our strategic investments like Malmish have had substantial con contributions to our bottom line. Uh, the company is in great shape. We're doing very well right now. And that's obviously reflected in the performance in our share price. So this is our one-year stock chart. And this is uh, quite a deviation from the typical trends in the, in the exploration uh, industry over that same time period. But yeah, we've done very well. The company's strong. We're growing fast. We've got a great technical team. And the people are having a lot of fun executing this business model right now. And it's a bad market. <laughs> when we return to the bull market, everyone's going to be even more excited about what we're doing. So yeah, we're very happy with this. And uh, come see us. We have a booth out in the foyer. We'd be happy to answer any questions. So yeah, thank you for your attention. Yeah.